الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين حديث نمبر 180 عن ابن عمر أن مولاة له أتته فقالت اشتد علي الزمان وإني أريد أن أخرج إلى العراق قال فهل الشام أرض المنشر وفي رواية أرض المحشر أصبري فإني سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول من صبر على شدتها يعني المدينة ولأوائها كنت له شفيعا أو شهيد كنت له شهيدا أو شفيعا يوم القيامة وفي لفظ لا يصبر على لأوائها وشدتها أحد إلا كنت له شهيدا أو شفيعا Translation One of the concubines of Ibn Umar came to him and said the time is becoming hard on me complaining her situation hard situation and I want to go to Iraq he said what about Shah? it's better it's the land of uh, where people will be gathered if they, before the day of judgment people will be pushed by a fire that will be kindling in Yemen it will be pushing people towards their mahshar to their gathering and the, uh, the gathering will be in the land of Sham He said, be patient, for I heard the Prophet وسلم, saying, now he's talking about Medina. There is no one that hold fast, that means show patience, regarding its hardness and its disease. But I will be for him a witness or a shafi'ah at the day of judgment. Subhanallah, that's a significant thing. Mm, I was proposed to live in Medina. Let's go there. I think I have to take advantage of this. Especially, we originated from Medina, myself. So I think if I have this chance, I'll get back to the place where my grand-grand-grandfather started there. That's good. Okay. Hadith 183. عن أبي خراش السلمي أنه سمع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم Now from now on, forget about what had passed, I'm going to mention this, the, the, the number, the serial number of the hadith to be found in Silsilat al-Ahadith al-Sahiha for Shaykh Albani. So in any case you want to get back to it, you can get back to it through this number. That's better for you. Now, عن أبي خراش السلمي أنه سمع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول من هجر أخاه سنة فهو كسفك دمه Whoever uh, broke and abandoned, broke and abandoned his brother one year, it will be considered similar to the case of shedding his blood. It's similar. The one who abandoned his brother one year as if he already shed his blood. As-Sahihah, when I say Sahihah, that means this is the reference of the Sirat al-Hadith al-Sahihah. As-Sahihah, 928. Now, let's get to the... The first number is the number as here. But the last number refers you to where? To the book of Al-Ban, because it's something like 16, 17 uh, volumes. Hadith 187. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Al-Mamluku Akhuk. فإذا صنع لك طعاما فأجلسه معك فإن أبى فأطعمه ولا تضرب وجوههم. He said, the slave is your brother. If he made food for you, 
then let him sit with you. But if he refused, if he rejected, then give him from the food and never hit the faces and never hit their faces. The Sahihah 2527. Hadith number 190. عن أبي هريرة قال بينما نحن جلوس مع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذ طلع علينا شاب من الثنية. Where's the ثنية? I think it's a place before reaching مدينة. It's close to it. So a man came to us from this place, a ثنية. فلما رأيناه رميناه بأبصارنا. When we saw him, we started to stare at him. قلنا, we said, لو أن هذا الشاب جعل شبابه ونشاطه وقوته في سبيل الله. Would it, would it be better that this man should be using his energy, his youth, his power? For the sake of Allah. Why don't, why don't he? Then the Prophet ﷺ heard their statement. Yani there is nothing fi sabirullah except the one who died. That's all. من سعى على والديه ففي سبيل الله. Whoever strove the best for the sake of his parents, to support them, to please, to please them, to suffice them, this is for سبيل الله as well. ومن سعى على عياله. And whoever kept striving. To support and suffice his family. Fafi Sabirullah. Woman sa'a ala nafsihi li wa'ifaha. And whoever strove, strove for the sake of his soul to abstinate it from haram. Li wa'ifaha. Fafi Sabirullah. This is also Fafi Sabirullah. وَمَنْ سَعَى عَلَى التَّكَاثُرْ فَفِي سَبِيلِ الشَّيْطَانِ And whoever kept striving only to exceed lively objects, <laughs> this is for the sake of shaitan. In another, in another narration, this is for the sake of taghut. Hadith number sahiha. Uh, Three, two, four, eight. Okay. Hadith number 194. Okay. Hadith 194. An Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu. قال مر رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم على عبد الله بن أبي بن سلول. See when the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام entered مدينة, you have to know that at that moment عبد الله بن سلول was about to be selected to be the king of مدينة. But the Prophet came, and the coming of the Prophet. Alayhi salatu wasalam was a problem to this man. He promised himself to be the king. And suddenly, when the Prophet came, you know, they treated the Prophet more than a king. They loved the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. So, when, when, when the Prophet came, nobody gave any more consideration or attention or value to this man. That's why, the Prophet's coming to Medina was a matter of choke in the throat 
of Abdullah bin Ubay bin Salul. Like this, he hated the Prophet. He promised himself to be the king. King! And after the Prophet came, he became nothing. <laughs> From being the king to become nothing. So he may speak to the Prophet and say, yes, sir, we believe. Oh, yes, we believe. He's extremely angry with the Prophet. But he's trying to keep that in his heart. Because he fears that the majority became, huh? Zakallah khair. That the majority became believers in the Prophet, supporters of Zakallah khair. Some of the companions said, Oh Prophet, let's try to yani, compensate something for the sake of his feeling. Try to, you know, improve. As I don't know how to say that in Arabic, in English. Yani, uh, to make him happy after the anger he had. So they went to him. They went to him. The Prophet said, okay, let's go. Then the Prophet was riding his donkey. And they saw Abdullah bin Ubay bin Salul and he was standing like this, then he was angry. He said to the prophet, uh, to the companions, why don't you turn away your she donkey from here? It's harming me with its farting. One of the companions said, I swear by Allah that, that the farting of, this, of the donkey of Rasulullah is better than you. Then there are some people who are fanatic people. They are the surroundings of Abdullah bin Ubay bin Salul. They shouted, they quarreled, and they, they started to physically abusing. There was a small fight, a little fight. And the Prophet was trying to stop them, trying to, to calm them, all of them. A fight took place between those hypocrites and the head of them is Abdullah bin Ubay bin Salul. And that is narrated by Bukhari. This is not this narration. But by the way, I just wanted to bring it to you. But the narration here, it says that uh, Abdullah bin Ubay bin Salul said, قَدْ غَبَّرَ عَلَيْنَ ابْنُ أَبِي كَبْشَ Ibn Abi Kabsha, they used to be using this mocking name in Mecca. And Abdullah bin Uwabi Salul used it in Medina against the Prophet. When he first came to Medina, Abdullah bin Uwabi Salul started to call him like what Abu Jahl, Abu Lahab, Abu Sufyan, they used to be calling the Prophet Muhammad ibn Abi Kabsha. And Kabsha is the small sheep. He is the son of the father of sheep. They used to use it as a mocking name to the Prophet Sallallahu so he said here in this narration, he's harming this, the donkey of your prophet is, uh, 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 no, sorry, the dust of the donkey of your prophet is harming us. So Abdullah bin Ubay bin Salul, the hypocrite, the head of hypocrisy, he had a son, what was his name? Also Abdullah. So this Abdullah, the son of this hypocrite, he said to the Prophet, O oh Prophet, if you want, I can bring you his head. I can bring his head to you. I swear by the, I swear by the one who honored you and descended the book on you. If you want me, Wallahi, I can bring his head. He's the son. And this hypocrite is his father. But the Prophet وسلم, the kind, the soft, he replied and said, لا ولكن بر أباك. No, 
But be righteous, be kind to your father. وَأَحْسِنْ صُحْبَتَهُ And improve your companionship with him. That's what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. As-Sahihah 3223. Sometimes I may forget. Please remind me if I, if I did. Hadith number 195. عَنْ حَنْظَلَةَ قَالْ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ لَا يُتْمَ بَعْدَ احْتِلَامْ No one should be considered as huh, orphan after he so wet dreams. There is no orphan, orphan what? Orphanism? Nothing. Yeah, well, any orphan. No one is orphan after he sees wet dreams. And no female is orphan when she, when she sees the blood. Alas, no more. That's the limit of being considered as orphan. Hadith number uh, Sahiha 3180. Orphan or innocent? Orphan, orphan. Yatim. Hadith number 196, also on Abdullah ibn Hanzala. أن عبد الله بن سلام مر في السوق وعليه حزمة من حطب فقيل له أليس الله قد أغناك عن هذا قال بلى ولكن أردت أن أدفع به الكبر سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول لا يدخل الجنة من كان في قلبه مثقال حبة من خردل من كبر. It was narrated by Abdullah bin Hamdullah that Abdullah bin Salam, I think you know who was Abdullah bin Salam. He was a rabbi Jew, not only a normal Jew, a rabbi Jew in Medina, waiting for that final prophet. And he confessed that he wrote in the scriptures that he used to be having a seal on the back between his shoulders, two shoulders. And he saw it. And he gave shahada. And the Prophet was happy with, with this. Then Abdullah bin Salam said to the Prophet, Oh Prophet, Jews are rude people. I know my people. Ask them about me if they come to you. Then they came to the Prophet And the Prophet said, What do you consider Abdullah bin Salam among you? They said, He is our master, the son of our master. He is our honored person. He is our, he is our honored person. The son of the honored person. Abdullah bin Salam was standing behind the Prophet And after hearing this, he came in front of them, he said, I believe this man, this prophet, and I bear witness that there is no other God but Allah, and Muhammad is his messenger. They said, huh? He is the worst among us, and the son of the worst among us. <laughs> then Abdullah bin Salam said to the prophet, didn't I tell you, Ya Rasulullah? Didn't I tell you? He knows his people. as <laughs> Um, yes, uh, 3,257. Uh, oh, so he said, uh, it was said to him, didn't Allah suffice you from needing to collect wood and go down to the market? He said, yes, Allah did. He sufficed me. But I'm using that kind of job in order to push away any any remnant of arrogance from my heart. I heard the Prophet ﷺ saying, the one that has an arrogance that equals even the weight of an atom in his heart 
will not enter paradise. Dear brothers, we must make sure that we empty our hearts from any arrogance because any small dot of that stain of arrogance will be shuckling you and me at the day of judgment from entering Jannah. All those hearts must take punishment. And this is what it meant by the, by the hadith, by the way. It does mean he will, if he has small arrogance, he will never enter Jannah eternally. No. That means he has to pass by huh? to be purified from this sin. He has to. Hadith 197, Amdirar bin Amdumra ibn Tha'laba, Qala Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, La yazalu nasu bi khayr ma lam yatahasadu. Still, people are in good circumstance. They're still good. As long as they do not envy one another. Because that was the first problem that occurred with the people of the Jews. They became stingy to the extent that caused them to fight one another and envy one another. No. Narrated, uh, okay, uh, Hadith on uh, Sahih 3386. Uh, hadith number 198, narrated by Anas ibn Malik, Qala Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. لا يستقيم إيمان عبد حتى يستقي حتى يستقيم قلبه. No iman will be stable until the heart of that that person will be stable. That means on faith. ولا يستقيم قلبه حتى يستقيم لسانه. And his heart will not become straight until his tongue becomes straight. وَلَا يَدْخُلُ رَجُلُنِ الْجَنَّةَ لَا يَأْمَنُ جَارُهُ بَوَائِقَهُ And no man will enter Jannah while his neighbor feel no secure from his continuous harms. As-Sahihah 2.841 Hadith number 200 عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لا ينبغي لذي الوجهين أن يكون أمينا The one who has a double standard face shouldn't be trustworthy shouldn't that means it can't be that he is hypocrite double standard two faces and at the same time, he is trustworthy. Had a Sahiha 3197. Hadith number 201. Ali ibn Umar, an al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, qala, la yambagi lil mu'mini an yakuna la'ana. He said, I said to Salam, a believer is not supposed to be a cursing person. May Allah curse, may Allah curse, may Allah curse. Cur you, you are cursed. How many times do we use these words? Especially when it, if we are normal, oh, nah, that's very bad, you know. But if we're angry, <laughs> brother, I cannot control myself. Yalla'an, yalla'an, yalla'an. Keep cursing, cursing. And when, you, when your tongue got used to this, you may curse even your father, your mother. You may be also, when you get extremely angry, you may be even cursing Allah. So keep yourself away from this word. Never let your tongue get used to it. Lest you may use it against your father and mother or even against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know in our country, subhanAllah, in Palestine and Syria, cursing Allah was something almost normal. Wallahi normal. People, even if they see someone, Rabbak, 
they curse Allah. How are you? We missed you. Rabbak. They curse him. Yeah, yeah, what kind of jahiliya? Instead of saying, La ilaha illallah, Alhamdulillah, there's, there's improvement now. Now if you see someone, if you see someone who's angry, that's better. But before it used to be something worse, using very bad words. Alhamdulillah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify this ummah and to improve it. So the improvement of this ummah will be bringing the victory closer and closer, inshallah. I'll stop here since people, brothers need to have some works. So inshallah ta'ala. By this, brothers, we have finished 200 hadith under, this, under the chapter of al-akhlaq, characters, morality, wal-bir, righteousness, was-sala, uh, sorry, was-sila, and joining the kinship. Alhamdulillah, by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As long as I'm here, I'm so happy to, um, to finish it with you. So the hadith, all the book will be reaching maybe something like, yeah, this page, yeah. And inshallah, as long as I'm alive, uh, I'm going to, inshallah, fulfill my wish that I read it for you all. And so I'm selecting, I'm not reading everything, I'm selecting the best, the most important, needy thing for you. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for your attendance. And these are blessed gatherings. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us and you forgiveness for that. Jazakallah khair. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah.